Welcome everyone to the uh, 2015 Oak Island Candidate Forum. Uh, my name is Alan Serkin. I'm the Local Government Services Director for the Cape Fear Council of Governments. And uh, I have the great honor of uh, moderating tonight's forum. Um, as you may know, the questions for this uh, forum have been solicited from the public. Perhaps many of you uh, provided questions. We received about 35 questions from the public and we've selected questions from those that we receive to hopefully cover a range of issues. Um, the proposed <coughs> format for tonight's uh, forum is as follows. Uh, the forum will be organized into two rounds. The first round will be for the mayoral candidates. Then we'll take about a 10 minute break or so and we'll have a second round with the candidates for council. Um, for each round, each candidate will be given first about 15 seconds or so just to do a brief introduction to make sure everybody knows who they are. Um, and follow following that, we'll have a series of questions. Uh, each candidate will get two minutes to answer each question. We'll rotate through uh, so a different candidate gets to answer each question first. Um, questions can be repeated if necessary, although I'll probably just read the question to each of you since they're not very long. We have a timekeeper who will be helping the candidates stay on time and keep their two minute limit. Um, at the end of the questions, each candidate will be given two minutes to give their closing statements. Um, and then, like I said, we'll take a break after the may mayor mayoral candidates and we'll do it all again for the uh, candidates for city council. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll start with our introductory uh, statements and uh, we'll start with Sin Brochure. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Council of Government and the city of uh, town of Oak Island for hosting this event. My name is Sin Brochure, Faircloth Brochure, for those that don't know me. I was born and raised on a farm in rural Cumberland County. I uh, got married and left uh, Cumberland County in 2000 and then went to Kinston, North Carolina. And in 2007, I uh, discovered Oak Island. I have four children and five beautiful grandchildren. I um, don't know what else I can tell you. There's plenty about me on my website, winwithsin.com, and it has everything you ever want to know about me. Thank you. Hello, I'm Richard D'Angelo. I moved here a little over 18 years ago to raise a family. My three children that are now senior, junior, and a freshman at South Brunswick High School uh, have lived here their whole life, and they're some great kids. And it's not just parenting skills, it's this community here. And I want to see that this community stays this way so that they can raise their children here and have the same quality of life that they had. And I hope to be mayor and hope facilitate that. You can vote for me on November 3rd. Thank you. I'm Bill Moyer and I'm applying for the job of Mayor of Oak Island. If I'm lucky enough to be hired, I'll be working for the people and be answerable only to the people of Oak Island. Please vote for Bill Moyer for Mayor. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Daryl Vickers and thank you for having me here. I am started and run businesses. I've taught businesses. I have managed government relations and I have led community development. I have the knowledge, the skills, the experience, and the intellect to help Oak Island. I ask for your vote on November the 3rd. Thank you, candidates. All right, we'll start with Sin Brochure for the first question. If you could please go to the podium. And uh, <coughs> uh, the first question is, what is your position on funding beach nourishment? My position on funding beach nourishment is fund it, fund it, fund it. That is our number one economic draw. It's the engine that keeps our businesses in, in business. Um, it brings livelihood to our area, and without it, no beach, no tourism. Um, I, I don't think I mentioned in my opening statement that I'm the director of tourism for the city of Southport on a leave of absence without pay. I, um, I will, however, if I'm lucky enough to win the job of um, Mayor of Oak Island, I will resign my job in, a, in South, uh, Southport immediately. Um, I, 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 have a, I don't think there's probably anyone alive that is more um, 
concerned about our beaches. I'm not only concerned about the renourishment, I'm concerned about a proactive approach at maintaining what we have now. During this last rainstorm, I actually went out, and I think some of the other of us went out as well, and took pictures to see for ourselves, to see what happened during and after it, it came. And, um, and actually, I'm, I was quite amazed that we didn't already have an active, proactive uh, plan in place. And that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Richard D'Angelo, what is your position on funding beach, ma beach nourishment? Well, I, I think a 30-year beach renourishment and maintenance plan is uh, key to the future of Oak Island. I think one of the first things that needs to happen after this election, whether or not I'm mayor, is we, we look at the occupancy tax and have it reviewed to see how it's been spent and try to encourage, encourage it to be spent as much as possible on beach renourishment. I think that we also have to look at new revenue streams. As the economy here starts to improve, I think that there's a number of different avenues that we can look at to fund beach renourishment. Some of those things are along the lines of having uh, the rental companies that handle weekly renters who come down here having some kind of additional fee that is put in that is then taking that money and applying all of it just to beach renourishment, having some kind of group body of the county and other towns in Brunswick County, having different events that can be resourced and funded to also then increase the beach renourishment and maintenance. Uh, but we, it is a priority first and foremost to me. Thank you, Bill Moyer. What is your position on funding beach nourishment? Well, I'd like to fund beach nourishment, <laughs> just like everybody else would here. Um, I think we can get some help from the county as well as the state. And the federal government is on a, doing a hiatus right now on funding beach nourishment. But I think they will start back up for too long, myself. Um, I don't think our beach is, is in that bad a shape right now. I think the, the last beach nourishment we got is still pretty much in place. I think we need some maintenance on it in some areas. But I've spoken with the Corps of Engineers, uh, some experts with them, and they say there should be plenty of sand right now in the Yellow Banks and on the backside of the island that we can do any maintenance we need to do in the next few years. And hopefully our situation will change by the time we have to do some major nourishment to the beach. Thank you. Bill Vickers, what is your position on funding beach nourishment? First and foremost, we've got to start looking at long-term solutions instead of short-term fixes. And uh, we've been uh, pumping sand onto the beach and that pumping operation costs $1,000 a linear foot. We need to start looking towards breaking up the currents that are hitting our beach and eroding it and start looking at longer-term solutions. And I've also talked to the Corps of Engineers in, in Vicksburg and there is available um, a device called tetrapods, which uh, when placed several hundred yards offshore and normal to the shore, which means parallel to it, has been proven effective in other parts of the world at reducing the current flow onto the beaches. And with that current flow cut down, we'll stop some of the erosion, but we're not going to be able to do anything with the wind or the um, wave action that's, that's going on there. Um, I also believe that uh, the county and the state benefit tremendously from our beach, and I'll be looking towards the county and the state to help us with our funding. Uh, we should not, the citizens of Oak Island don't need to be bearing all that responsibility. Thank you, Mr. Vickers. Uh, second question, we'll start with Richard D'Angelo. Uh, Mr. D'Angelo, how do you feel about the town's current height restriction, and would you recommend any changes? Well, I think it's clear with everyone running for city council, they've all made it clear that they're not going to raise height limits. I don't think that we are going to raise height limits anytime soon. I don't think that the sewer that is in place on the island can actually handle uh, some kind of increase on the island. So I think at this stage in the game, those things should stay the same where we have some things to look into as some of these lots that currently are in the 41 foot 
uh, zone maybe changing to be in a 35 foot zone will have some non-conforming issues and I do think we need to set together a committee to review those things when sometime down the future whether it be a fire or whether it be some kind of storm damage, if over 50% of that structure is damaged, we'll have an issue of how high they can build. Other than that, it seems like the height restrictions are working just fine. Thank you. Mr. Moyer, how do you feel about the town's current height restriction and would you recommend any changes? I wouldn't recommend any changes. I think uh, we don't want high-rise uh, buildings on our island. I think development of high-rise structures on the other side of the bridge of the annex land would be a good idea. Uh, that would bring in more revenue. And, and as far as being, if the sewer system is able to handle it, uh, handle high-rises on that side too, it's, we're, we can always expand the sewer system with more revenue coming in from buildings on the other side of, uh, of the bridge off the island. But on the island, we need to keep it like it is. I, I don't want uh, high-rise buildings or parking meters or no dogs on the beach signs anywhere, <laughs> everywhere. I, that's, I'd like to keep it very much like it is, the atmosphere. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vickers, how do you feel about the town's current height <coughs> restriction? And would you recommend any changes? Uh, there's a couple of things that um, concern me about the height restrictions. Uh, first and foremost is a study that a fellow by the name of Pilke did and talked about wind blockage. And I would like uh, to see any revisions take that into consideration. Uh, and for those of you who may not have read uh, uh, reading North Carolina Beaches, he talks about the houses that are on the the first row houses being a little bit lower than the second row houses in order that the wind not swirl and blow the sand on the beach. And I think that's a good idea. But we're changing some of the A, I think it's AE and AV, uh, uh, the um, AE and EV uh, zonings for uh, insurance purposes. And I'd like to see those things grab, uh, grandfathered in, the heights on those things in order that our neighborhoods remain consistent. You don't want to have things changing in order to accommodate these new CAMA regulations and stuff, but let's keep it all the same. Let's keep it consistent with the neighborhoods. Thank you. Ms. Brochure, how do you feel about the town's current height restriction? I have a very simple answer or response to that question. We are a family vintage beach. Oak Island will never be anything but that. None of us in this room want anything but that. The h heights we have now, I agree with this council and their stance on it, the 41 and the 35 are sufficient to build anything on this island you need. However, I am not opposed to discussion on raising the limits for across the bridge in the more commercial district. Um, and, I, and, I, and I agree, again, I say discussion, not to change, but, um, that's my stance, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you very much. That concludes the second question. So we'll move on to the third question, and we'll start with Bill Moyer. Mr. Moyer, what do you see Oak Island looking like in 20 years? I'd like to see it look, looking very much like it does now with some minor improvements. The atmosphere, I want it to stay the same. I want, uh, I want a small town atmosphere. That I, I've been here a long time, 23 years. And we moved here because we wanted to, uh, the area was wonderful, the atmosphere was great, the people are wonderful, and, and we need to keep the small town atmosphere. Sometimes the tourists are a little bit of a nuisance, but they do bring in a lot of revenue. Uh, uh, like I said earlier in the last question, you know, the big things in my, three things in my mind, being, being a resident here for quite a while, is, uh, is no high-rise buildings because, you know, and we have all these beach accesses, it's just great. And uh, since I have a big giant dog, I like being able to take my dog to the beach. And, and I don't want to see parking meters and things like other beaches have around. And, and we just, the, the way we have it now, if we just enforce the ordinances we have now, I think the island would be just fine and stay very much the same atmosphere as we've always had. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Moyer. Mr. Vickers. <laughs> What do you see Oak Island looking like in 20 years? Hope and I came here because it was an affordable, family-friendly beach. We want it to remain affordable, 
remain family friendly. I'd like to see us move towards a pedestrian friendly downtown area around 58th Street. Uh, it just bugs the heck out of me to uh, have to wait through four or five parking or lights to get through that intersection in the, in the summertime and I hate not having parking around the post office. So I'd like to see us develop some uh, pedestrian friendly downtown so that you could park your car, you could walk around, you could go into shops, you could go into a restaurant, you could eat at Russell's or down, walk down to Bina's and you could have breakfast, lunch and dinner downtown in a fam family friendly atmosphere. This is a residential island. This is not a commercial island. I pride myself on telling people that we have more ice cream parlors than we have beer joints. <laughs> and that's what I like. And I'm hoping that in another 20 years, my grandkids will be moving here. Thank you, sir. 30 years, 30 years. <laughs> Ms. Brochure, what do you see Oak Island looking like in 20 years? I see Oak Island looking like in 20 years, pretty much what it looks like today, at least that's what I hope. Although I can dream big, since you're letting me have an open-ended question, I'd like to see it sidewalks everywhere. I'm not that concerned about having a localized downtown because I like what we have right now. I like the little strip shopping centers that here and there and yonder, but it would be great if we could have walking um, sidewalks everywhere in 20 years. That may be a possibility. Um, I, like the, I like everything to be clean and neat, make it all look uniformed but not changed. And I also hope that we have some kind of resolution to some of our traffic and maybe a light or two and maybe a crossover. And I think the new comprehensive plan that's in progress right now, and I hope all of you come out to the meetings and put your input in and give us some idea of where you want it to go in the future. Um, that's my dream, and I hope it's there, and I hope I'm here 20 years to see it. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Brochure. Uh, Mr. D'Angelo, what do you see Oak Island looking like in 20 years? Well, I, I agree with everybody up here, preserving the family-oriented beach community, having small business. I, I really think small businesses and supporting those small businesses here on, our, on the island are vital to that growth. Uh, I do like the idea of connectivity, so you can walk or bike from town hall here all the way to the old bridge. And I do see the growth off the island being tremendous. And part of that growth, I do see having something like a jitney where people will, and what a jitney is, is kind of like a small bus, that people will park over there, they'll leave their car, they'll get taken over to the island, and ideas like that, that'll help alleviate the traffic issues, especially in the summer. Uh, I, I definitely see, uh, uh, there being more things for families to do, and I encourage the town to reach out to small businesses and try to create public-private joint ventures that can make some of these things happen on the island and off the island. But the idea of being able to walk to the beach or walk to somewhere and not just play putt-putt, but maybe have, I'll tell you another thing I love to see in private public thing is a swimming pool on the island. I don't think the town can afford it, but we can put together the right public and private sector to fund something like that. And I certainly would like to see uh, the areas of rec continue to be funded the way they are because I think the, the rec department's done a wonderful job for the young folks and the old folks hand in hand. Uh, but the biggest thing is encouraging small business. Whipping through this at quite a rapid rate, uh, everybody, so uh, wonderful news. I, don't, I think that we just had our first 15-second warning, um, so uh, we're not using up our two minutes quite for everybody, so I haven't had to tell anybody to, to quiet down, so thank you, everybody, for that. Um, and we're filling up very nicely, everyone, uh, so I'm sorry we don't have any more seats, but uh, please try to find a, a spot to stand and, uh, and enjoy. Um, <coughs> so... Moving on to our final question and starting with uh, Mr. Vickers, uh, what experience can you bring to the town, to the position of mayor? I, uh, <laughs> I'm an engineer, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an educator. I uh, ran the um, group vice president for community development and public affairs for the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce. We had 1,440 businesses in there. I served as a government uh, 
relations. I dealt with uh, three congressmen whose districts uh, converged in, uh, within 100 yards of, of, of the chamber. Uh, we had a program today. I was in, in Washington leading a, a group of businessmen on 9-11, and uh, that's like herding cats. So I, I, I'm a cat herder, and that, that, that probably qualifies me for, for any position here on, on Oak Island. Um, but uh, I have also been an educator, so I have um, taught the people um, about businesses and running business and management. Um, I have started and run my own business, as I've said. I've been involved with uh, politicians in Washington and, and the state level and local level now. So I've, um, I've been around the block once or twice. And one of the things that I wanted to point out was I mentioned tetrapods for uh, mitigating the sand erosion. And I saw those in use in Japan. And it was a really good idea. And it marked the uh, sand, kept the sand from eroding in, in beaches in Japan. And they have a real bad problem over there. So been around the block once or twice. And uh, so I think I can bring uh, a little bit of experience and knowledge. And uh, now we're going to 15 minutes. I'll go for the, <laughs> no need to, no need to. I've got the skill and, and the experience and knowledge to help. Thank you, Mr. Vickers. Ms. Brochure, what experience can you bring to the town? Let me actually take my, my full two minutes with this one. Um, I bring a lot of experience and leadership in the area of business, economic development, tourism, and national and local government. I think I'm the only candidate in this group, not that I don't love all these guys, that have experience in all four of those areas. Um, I started my career as a teacher of a adult education class for Lenore Community College back when I was in my early 30s. I raised my children before then. And then I moved on to be a real estate broker in our local town in Kinston. Get going a little further was paralegal. Um, I ended my career in Kinston as the vice president of the Chamber of Commerce and the di assistant director of tourism there in Kinston, Lenore County, for the Tourism Development Authority. Moved to, moved to Oak Island, did a little bit of real estate, and, and actually opened a company on Highway 17, and then the market beyond going bust, it went double bust. Wrapped everything up, put it in storage, and just didn't work for a year until the city of Southport had an ad in the paper that said, we need a tourism director. And I tried my best not to apply, but I did, and I got the job. And my job in Southport actually consists of managing not only the tourism, that if you've been to Southport lately, you've seen a tremendous change in the last four years. It also includes um, a group of wonderful volunteers, 40 of them, that man our welcome center. It includes a store. Um, I'm the economic development director. And I'm also the museum creator, which was not on my resume at the time I took the job. I'm more, I'm uniquely qualified to be the next mayor of Oak Island. And I look forward to that job. If the residents uh, decide that they choose me, I will uh, be the best little cheerleader you've ever seen. Thank you very much, Mr. D'Angelo. What experience do you bring to the town and to the position of mayor? Well, I, I had the fortune of growing up in the entertainment business and the corporate communications world. and. I spent most of that time as an associate producer. And what you're doing is a little bit of everything, ushering that idea that's on a script to the final product. And that's how I see the mayor uh, being. You, you really don't get to make a vote on things, but what you can do is help get the job done, fill in where you need to, and make the calls. My relationship since I moved here I've been a, a, a real estate broker for over 15 years, and I have a great deal of relationships with people in business, not just on the island, but in the state and regionally as well. And I think that being able to negotiate, that is something that also I can bring to bear. I think there's a lot of things that need to go on for the people of Oak Island, and people haven't been looking out for them. That's where I think the transparency that we need, uh, I can help do that as mayor. 
and I have raised a family here and still continue to raise a family here. And the relationships that I have with the different parents and the different folks at the school, the different churches in the area, we have a very strong church various groups of churches here and I think that part of our community part of being mayor is being able to reach out and find out how to pull people together to get whatever it is that needs to be done and I look forward to doing that thank you sir and Mr. Moyer what experience can you bring to the town as the position of mayor well uh, let's see I've owned property here for 42 years I've lived here full time for 23 years I'm married to my lovely wife, Leah, now for 45 years. I've got two children, five grandchildren, and a mother-in-law all living here. Um, I served for many years with the Greensboro Police Department as a patrolman and as a detective. In the detective division, I worked in internal affairs, burglary, and robbery homicide divisions. After leaving there, I... Uh, had several businesses in real estate investment, management, and construction. Uh, I'm a patented inventor and own termite detection systems, and I've written and published several books on entomology, botany, and life experiences. My opinion is that, that most of the problems facing Oak Island are caused by lack of oversight. I think uh, most people have noted that when there's no oversight and no one really watching what's going on, that's in the past, that's what probably have brought, created a lot of problems. And you know I'm talking about the sewer system and, and all the other parts of the, that affect from the sewer system, like the streets, uh, streets having to be recut and things of this nature. So I think I'm a really perfect person to get in there. I'm not afraid to do oversight, watch what's going on, Mayor doesn't have a lot of pro a lot of power. However, I can there is I can as a citizen even with access to being a mayor, I can watch over what's going on, and make sure we're not closing the barn door after the horse gets out anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moyer. And uh, we're going to go on to our backup question since we're moving on at a uh, at a nice clip. So uh, we'll go back to uh, uh, to the top to Ms. Brochure and. Uh, we will ask you the, uh, the fifth question, if you would step up to the podium. Do we have a comprehensive plan to repair or resurface the streets in the town, and will you commit yourself to solve that problem? Did you say, do we have one? Do we have one? I do know there is some sort of plan, because I've talked with the city manager, and he assures me that there, the plan is at this moment on a need, by need basis. Um, I also know that that there is a comprehensive plan coming out and it's probably addressed in that, but to answer your second part of your question, absolutely 120,000% will I be behind finding a way to fix our bumpy streets because it's tearing everybody's cars up. And um, that's probably one of the top priorities if I become mayor. Thank you, Mr. D'Angelo. Do we have a comprehensive plan to repair and resurface streets, and will you commit yourself to solving that problem? Uh, I believe there's a plan, but I don't think it's very comprehensive. One of the things that I plan to do should I become mayor is spend time going through each department and talking and finding out with those department heads and those department employees where different plans that should be being followed haven't been being followed. I think. Uh, you know, part of the issue with, with the uh, roads is some of it is because of sewer and how that's funded falls differently than something that is just a road issue. And I think also as mayor reaching out to the Department of Transportation and even the state itself for various grant money, I think that our roads, uh, it, at times it's like you're driving around Beirut and it's not nice and it needs to change. I also think we need to bring back the grass cutting that got sent out because I think it looks horrible now that someone else is doing it. So I would make sure that our employees stay our employees too so that we can get things like taking care of our roads done properly. Thank you. Mr. Moyer, do we have a comprehensive plan to repair or resurface streets and will you commit yourself to solving that problem? This is what I was talking about oversight. Uh, I have investigated this extensively, actually. Uh, 
when, when they were cutting open the streets and then filling them in and paving them, they didn't put enough substrate in there, so they started settling and sinking after over a period of time. And so you think, well, why don't we go back to the contractor and say, hey, you got to pay for this. Well, somebody back in our old town government signed a piece of paper saying, you didn't need to put that in there. And our town just paid a, a private enterprise to come in and do over 3,000 bore samples out of each one of these. And almost all of them had the, not the right amount of, of substrate in there. So now we can't go back to the contractor because somebody signed off of it in the town way back when, when this was being done. There's somebody involved in m supposedly managing the sewer system installation. Now my suggestion is if we can find out who that was, we can just all go beat the hell out of them. <laughs> I don't know what else you can do. <laughs> but we're gonna have to fix them and they're testing some stuff now that may be able to do it without cutting it. But there's not a whole else, a lot of recourse uh, as far as the contractor is concerned. Thank you. Mr. Vickers, do we have a comprehensive plan to repair or resurface streets, and will you commit yourself to solving that problem? Yes. Both questions. Uh, the, the problem that we have is, is the Powell money, and we just got that as a couple, that's 300,000, I believe. And uh, that's money dedicated to our, to our streets. And the biggest problem that we have is in funding because we need to have the money to do the streets. And that's where we're at. Uh, yes, we obviously have to, to fix our streets. It, it's not an easy, easy uh, solution. And um, we'll all have to uh, replace our tires and realign our vehicles for a while. But we need the money that is the driving factor behind repairing the streets. We've got 300,000 now, we need a lot more. Thank you, sir. And uh, now we'll move into the uh, closing statements <coughs> portion of this uh, round. And uh, since we're rotating through, we'll start with uh, Mr. D'Angelo. Once again, thank you all for coming out tonight. It's wonderful to see a standing room only situation like this. I. Uh, I've been here, again, for a, a, a little over 18 years, and, and what I came looking for was not to retire, it was a place to raise a family, and it has been a wonderful place. And I want to see it stay that way, and I think it can, but we definitely need transparency in the government here. We need to know where the money's going, and I will make sure that I will protect your money because that's one thing for running for mayor that I can do, is follow up with everybody to find out where is this money, what was it spent on, and get the right answers. I also think that, again, the relationships that I have that have been forged over the years here and the experience that I have in the communications world helps me be able to talk to people, and then talk to other people and talk to other people and put together something that makes something work for everybody. We can't do anything without money. It's just a matter of finding new revenue streams. And I think that is another thing that as mayor I will spend time doing is looking at and working with committees to find new ways of making revenue because we can't keep paying it in our property taxes and our sewer bill increases and all these different things that have made it very difficult to continue living on the island. I want to keep this an affordable beach community. My name is Richard D'Angelo. My phone number is 910-279-2398. Call me anytime with a question or send me a text. Please vote for me November 3rd for mayor. Thank you. minutes for your closing statement. Well, I'm a novice at this uh, politics stuff. Um, the mayor is the official head of the town government, but has very few powers. I think the main role of the mayor is to guide and motivate people. Now, I feel like I'm the best common sense candidate to carefully guide Oak Island and keep it the town we all love. Uh, I will take every action I can to build a better future for my family and for your family in Oak Island. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Vickers, your closing statement. I've got, I've got to get
three minutes? <laughs> Bill? We have, up here we have uh, four people, all whose hearts are with Oak Island. And uh, I know some people, uh, some of my friends um, chide me a little bit. Um, they say they don't care how much I know, but let me tell you something. You should need to know how much I care. And I do care about Oak Island. That's why we moved here. That's why we want this community here. There were four issues that, that uh, got me involved. One was our money. We've got to conserve our money. We've got to build up a reserve to, to handle contingencies. We've got to do that. We've got to preserve our beaches. We've got to work for long-term solutions on our beach, not just short-term solutions. Number three, we've got to protect our environment. It pains me to see the trees cut down. And to that end, anyone that wants longleaf pines, I have over 300 longleaf pine se se seedlings that I would love to give out to you to plant because they put down a long tap root and they hold our island together. That's what we want to do. And then finally, we want to grow responsibly. We don't need to grow here on the island as much as we need to grow over on Route 211 and Midway Road. So those are the things I care about our community. And I ask for your vote on November the 3rd. And, uh, Ms. O'Shea. My desire to be the next mayor of Oak Island is not only because I love this island, it's because I think that Oak Island is ready for a new set of eyes and a new way of thinking. I and many other Oak Island residents believe that we are on the dawn of a tremendous opportunity. And not all candidates are created the same. This election is important to have experience, qualifications, and common sense. I, as I stated before, am the only candidate that has leadership, proven leadership ability in business, economic development, tourism and government, both national and local. If you agree with me and you think that Oak Island needs a new set of eyes and a new way of thinking, join me at the pose, polls on November 3rd and let's look back on this election as the turning point in Oak Island's bright future. I ask for your support, your, your trust and your vote on November 3rd and help me and help me help you together we can break, make it a better tomorrow thank you all right i'd like to thank our candidates uh, that concludes the first round and uh, concludes the, uh, the 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 round of the forum for our uh, mayoral candidates and uh, we're going to take about a 10 minute break everybody and we're going to switch up <laughs>
and uh, married to my lovely wife for 45. We have seven in one house, beautiful grandkids. Good evening. I'm Helen Cashwell, live at 3407 East Yacht. I retired here in 91. I was born and raised in Happy, Texas, and then I moved to Happy Oak Island. <laughs> I am thrilled to be here, love this place. I have two daughters that live in Dallas. I have a granddaughter, it's in Dallas, and I'm a widow of a husband that I dearly love for 62 years. But believe me, I am so involved and so loving of this community. There is just, it, it just is unreal. That's why I'm back here tonight, simply because of my love and my involvement in this town. Thank you. Mr. Kaiser. I'm Danny Kaiser. I'm finishing up a, uh, my first term is on the city council, town council. I've lived here for 16 years. I'm a retired firefighter paramedic from Bald Head Island, uh, retired six years ago. I have a son, two daughters, three granddaughters. And I tell you, your granddaughters think it's neat when their granddad lives at the beach. Uh, and then also I have my biggest cheerleader, my wife of three years, Vicki, sitting back there in the audience. Thank y'all for coming tonight to hear us. Mr. Pittman. My name is Tim Pittman. I was born in Raleigh. I moved down here in 1981 to work at the nuclear plant. I've been here 34 years. I've been a property owner here since 1985. Um, I was fire chief for eight years. I joined the fire department in 83, stayed there through 98, um, left the nuclear industry for a while, and now I'm back in it. And I love volunteering. I've been a volunteer since 1976, mostly fire department. And um, I love mm -hmm. this island. I love this lifestyle. And I would appreciate your vote. And finally, Mr. Weinkoff. My name is Jeff Weinkoff. I'm running for re-election. Uh, I've been married to my lovely wife for 29 years. I have uh, two kids, three grandkids. I uh, decided to run for this office four years ago because the taxpayers of this town needed somebody who would speak up for them and listen to them and make sure the policies and everything that went in this town was right. And that's what I've done. Now, before we get into the first round of questions, I made a promise that I would make an announcement and I'd have already forgotten and not fulfilled my promise. I just want everybody to know, since we've got a packed house, uh, that we are working on the Oak Island land use plan and that there will be some meetings November 5th and November 12th from 6 to 7.30 here at town council. Please come, give your input. It will be very much welcome. If you guys are here tonight, I suspect you have that civic bug and you care about the future of your island. So uh, this would be a great opportunity uh, to get involved. So with that being said, we'll move into our rounds of questions for our council. Um, we'll start with Ms. Bell. And uh, if you would approach the podium, please. The first question is, what is your position on funding beach nourishment? Our beach is our, our greatest asset. Without it, we're, we would not be happy. We would not have the tourists, not have the tourist dollars that we need. I think it needs to be spread out into several different piles. I don't think that we should fund it all ourselves. I think that the county and the state level um, needs to contribute some as well. Our accommodations tax needs to be used um, to fund our beach nourishment. Thank you. Mr. Blaylock. What is your position on funding beach nourishment? As Sheila said, we are the beach. We have to take care of our beach. We have to maintain it. It has been proven now that some of the uh, other resources for funding are not as reliable as we had hoped. So I think we need to start looking for different resources and different ways to generate funding. We have to have the money to support the beach. Thank you very much. Cashwell, what is your position on funding beach nourishment? Well, absolutely, we have to fund it, and we should have started 20 years ago, but that's history. The nicest thing about it is we now have an opportunity to look forward, not backward. We, should, we will start, elect me, and we will start the day after my election, because I believe we have enough discretionary funds coming from und uncollected taxes 
to start this project. We need to get on with it. Um, looking for X number of dollars from un unknown sources is a wish. And I've always believed you can do that. And if you, if you are lucky enough to win the lottery, that helps. But first of all, you're gonna have to look at yourself. How do we do it ourselves? We start immediately putting funds aside, be they 10 cents on the dollar, whatever comes out of our discretionary funds, start now. However, I will make this caveat. You cannot put funds aside unless they're locked up. I've seen too much action of councils later on looking around, need money, and oh, we have this pot over here, let's use it. We simply cannot go forward with that. We need to start the project. We have a plan beginning now, and we need to continue on that. I was excited to hear that FEMA is looking to give us funds for the dunes that have been destroyed in this last uh, storm. That's a start, but believe me, folks, this is not a small item. If we can get help from other f sources, that's great. But we need to look at ourselves. What is important to us? How much are we willing to put in it? Start now, lock it up, and then move forward. But it can be done. Mr. Kaiser, what is your position on funding beach nourishment? Well, I think we all agree that the beach is why people come to Oak Island. They don't come for the restaurants. They don't come for the theme parks, the attractions, they come for that beach. We have about 12 or so miles of beach. Uh, and it takes money, depending on how much you want to spend, you want to rebuild your dunes, you want to maintain the sand. Uh, this past year, we had the uh, choice in this uh, past budget to uh, raise taxes, but I voted against that, and immediately the paper said, oh, you just don't want to do it because it's election year. Well, no, that's not why I didn't do it. The reason I voted not to raise taxes is we just come off a four year reevaluation and that reevaluation was all over the board. Some people's went up, some went down. Uh, the wooded area went up greatly. And secondly, we just come off of three years of our 11 and three quarter percent utility hike. Now I'm not gonna tell you why we had to do that because I can't do that in an hour. It, it was made way more complicated than that. But uh, I wasn't gonna put anything else right now on people that live here or myself. We just couldn't stand it. I'm looking at, uh, I think it's a regional thing, people from all over Brunswick County, all over this state, and all over the East Coast in the country comes to Oak Island. I'm surprised at how many people come from the Midwest. They, people come from Florida. So we've got to come up with a way to fund this. Uh, you know, the accommodation tax, when I first got on council, I didn't know what it was, but I found out it was being used as a slush fund uh, in, a, in, a, in part. Well, we've quit that. We've transferred the golf course to our general funds. And uh, hopefully when we get the pier paid off in five years, that money could be diverted to the beach. Thank you. Mr. Pittman, what is your position on funding beach nourishment? I agree with probably the sentiment of everybody else that has been up here tonight is the beach is our most valuable resource. It's why everybody comes to this island. When I moved down here in 81, I had the choice of Southport, Bowling Spring Lakes, Wilmington, Sunset Harbor that was pretty much just mobile homes. And I decided if I was going to live this close to the coast, I wanted to live on the beach. I wanted to live here on the island. So I think that nobody really has all the answers to, to the questions, we, we take the best shot that we can. Um, this is a big country, as with other issues that we're facing with the town, we are not the only ones that are, that are having to address erosion issues. I think you look at Hurricane Katrina down in, in uh, New Orleans, you look at the hurricanes that have hit the East Coast. I think we should network with the other communities and see what they have done, what's been available to them, what they've done to mitigate the damage that was done there and how they've rebuilt their beaches. I think that we need to network and not try to come up with all the answers ourselves, but to reach out to other people that have faced the same problems and seen what they did to put their communities back in order and solve problems that they have faced. Not just with beach erosion, but with other things that everybody's got on their mind that I'm not gonna say the S word right now, but there is an answer to all of it, it's just, it's just going out there and doing what you need to do to find those answers and do it in a way 
that it doesn't stick hands deeper in our pockets because I live here and I pay the same assessments and everything you guys do. And um, I would love to have some help from other areas like out in the county, people that use these beaches that take, um, take advantage of the fact that this is such a popular area. We have tourism that comes to the area and their property value goes up and I think we should share the wealth a little bit and see if we can get some help throughout the county and the state. But there is an answer somewhere and we can find it. So I'm very much in support of beach renourishment. Thank you, Mr. Pittman. Mr. Weinkoff, what is your position on funding beach nourishment? I'm in favor of looking at ways to do beach renourishment. I actually asked the town manager to get a meeting with the county commissioners and other town leaders to finally take beach renourishment seriously. The taxpayers of Oak Island don't need to take this on by themselves. Everybody around this county and throughout the state enjoys our beach. Why should it be left on us to refund it, renourish this beach? It should not be. We were told in, two months ago in a, in a meeting here in town council by the tourism director of Brunswick County, if tourists went away, everybody's taxes in the county would go up $400. That's a lot of money. If we took small steps now to be able to create districts throughout the county to be able to have a small portion go for beach renourishment, it may cost every taxpayer around $40 or maybe a little bit more. But that's a small step that's taking the backs off of us and spreading the beach out to everybody. We need to look at different ways with the state and see how the state's going to get involved. I know the governor recent said with this storm, he was gonna put every effort to make sure that the beaches got re rebuilt if they were destroyed. We're looking at that. The state's been down here this week. FEMA's been down here this week and we're looking at different ways. Beach renourishment is a big effort for this town. When we started to do the beach inlet, the dredging part, we had people that was for it and we had people that were against it. But the big thing was we got to realize tourists come here for one reason. They come here for our beach. If we do not have a beach for them to come to, they're going to go somewhere else and we wind up paying higher taxes. Our best job is to do is to get together and make sure that our county commissioners, along with other town leaders, know what's involved here with tourism re revenue. We went from being 11th in the state for tourism to 9th in Brunswick County. And it's time that we all work together to make sure our beaches are protected. very much for our second question we'll start with uh, mr. Blaylock um, <laughs> if you would approach the podium please sir um, what plan would you put in place to ensure that you as councilmen are kept informed of the amount of unpaid debts the town is amassing as well as the age of those debts so as to provide better oversight Wow and I'm glad I didn't go first <laughs> <laughs> I will freely admit that I am not a politician, nor am an accountant. Um, I would have to learn and study what the, uh, the finances are, where they are, and, but I am married to an accountant. So I do have an appreciation for the fact that you have to oversee everything. You have to account, you have to be responsible for everything. You have to have the paperwork. And that's one of the first things that we should do is we should go over every single item we have and look at it and know where we stand with it and communicate that to you folks. Because just having us know it and making decisions based upon that, and then you wake up the next morning and go, where did that come from? And I, that's the important thing is, is to work together with you to uh, oversee everything and let you know what is going on so you can have a voice. Thank you. Ms. Cashwell, what plan would you put in place to ensure that you as councilman are kept informed of the amount of unpaid debts the town is amassing as well as the age of those debts so as to provide better oversight? That's a really good question and I'll tell you why because every month the finance director puts out a, no puts out a notice of accounts that are aged and anything that you want to know up to date. There is no reason for a councilman not to make himself aware of it. I'm amazed that the, the um, complete lack of turning everything over. You individuals must understand that five people run your lives and run your town. 
the city council, actually the town council, actually hires the town manager. He reports directly to them. And in, and in that respect, he does his due diligence with the employees. But if there was ever an election that is important, it's this one. The current council has done a good job. They had a tremendous overcome, a, amount of, of debt to overcome and efforts to get in place. They did that very successfully. However, the patient still is in the uh, recovery room. Moving forward, it's important that when you have a question and you turn it over to staff, you ask them the next month, what is the answer? I've seen citizens totally dumbfounded. The council will talk to the staff, the staff will have a question to go away with, and they get no answers. It goes off into a black hole. That's not my style. I have a Rolodex mind that keeps saying, what am I missing here, what am I missing here? I'm actually chairman of the Capital Improvement Committee, which tells you that if there's anything I want to know about is what is the finances. And when some department head comes in and wants something bought in the way of a capital asset, what's your money? Where are you going to get it from? So that's critical. But we do have the process in place. It just needs to be exercised. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. What plan would you put in place to ensure that you as councilmen are kept informed of the amount of unpaid debts the town is amassing, as well as the age of those debts, so as to provide better oversight? Well, y'all heard us talk about the new software implementation that's been going on right near since I've been on council. It's not like going up to Best Buy and buying a $99 program to put on your computer. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on this program and it took a while to implement. I was quite appalled when, when I got elected to how much money was laying out there, how much sewer district fees, how much taxes, water bills and what have you. But it was more than just having it on a legal pad piece of paper and looking at it. But we, we have since, uh, and several of us on the council has, has pushed this issue that we want an accounting at every council meeting of just how much money we have. How much is in the checkbook? How much could we spend? How much could be spent for this? Well, we, we've got there, and we, we're better on our uh, financial situation and knowledge of it than we were. Uh, the software implementation, if any of you were at council, we're moving right along with that. We're, uh, we're, we're pleased with it, and it, it's going to make things a lot better. Uh, but, you know, no matter how much we keep up with it, how much we know, we still have $98 million of debt on the sewer system and $52 million of interest, and we're going to pay on that 16 to 18 years. It don't matter how much we write that down, how much we keep up with it, you've got to always know that it's there, and we can't work miracles. We can't make it go away. A lot of people said just, you know, don't pay it. See what happens. Well, those options aren't real good. I, I can tell you that. Uh, so we've made strides, and, and I guess I'm a little... Uh, one-sided, I've been on council for four years, and I'm happy with what we've done. If, if I was not on council and I was sitting out there with y'all, I'd say, gosh, uh, y'all have done a good job these four years with the money. Thank you, Mr. Pittman. What plan would you put in place to ensure that you as councilmen are kept informed of the amount of unpaid debts the town is amassing, as well as the age of those debts, so as to provide better oversight? Unless I'm missing, that is such a simple question. I mean, it's, it's um, in the computer age, you have a spreadsheet and you make everybody aware of exactly the issues that you were just describing. I, I don't understand. When I was fire chief, we bought the new fire, I built the new fire station. Well, I didn't, but I was the fire chief when we proposed and were approved for the new fire station down at Middleton Street. Um, we had all new turnout gear. We had a new ladder truck that, that we were paying on. And the town at the time was it was a really a well-oiled machine. The employees, an awesome group of employees. Um, I had somebody to go to when I needed to buy something. It took my signature, and it took, at the time, it was Becky Beard or, or Kathy Harville. It, it just, just a really good situation for a department head here at the town. And... Um, I don't understand how some of the questions are coming up that the town is is apparently not doing as well as it did then. And again, I, I don't think any one of us uh, can can solve all of these issues. So you're going to have to have people that are going to work together, that are going to 
that are going to recognize a problem when it's there, but I don't understand how the same questions keep coming up more and more over the years if things are being run efficiently. And I'm not saying that they're not, but that's a pretty simple question to answer. You just have a spreadsheet printed out and all the information's there and you get together collectively and you do what needs to be done. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Weinkoff, what plan would you put in place to ensure that you as councilman are kept informed of the amount of unpaid debts the town is amassing as well as the age of those debts? Well, I, I, I'd like to answer this question. We are doing that. It was in the past where we couldn't even, computers would not even talk to each other in, in this town hall. Each department wouldn't talk to each other. And since the new system has come in the line, I gotta give credit where credit's due. Councilman Scott, along with Med Councilor Medlin, Councilor Kaiser, myself, and Councilor Painter, said we wanna know how much finances, how much taxes are owed at every meeting because how can we, as a council, look to fund anything if we don't know how much money we have. Well, that chart has been established. We get something at every meeting that tells us a breakdown of everything. It tells us how much taxes is owed, how much has been collected, and we know that. The other thing is, we have a new tax collector now, and I tell you, I don't wanna be on her bad side because she will come after, she's a bulldog. And the last year alone, she's collected $3 million. And this reflects every time we have a board meeting because the paperwork is sitting in our box when we get there so we can study it and go over it and see what's been collected and what hasn't been collected and what's owed. So the question is, yes, we're doing that. We're pursuing that. Because as a council, we need to know that when we do our job. That's part of our job to represent y'all, to know the facts, the numbers, and make sure everything's right. And right now that's happening. This is the point where I wish I was more of a public speaker. There are processes in place. There are audits done. There are um, checks and balances. One person cannot actually go in and write a check and spend money without several other people knowing it. As far as the back taxes are concerned, I think a lot of the numbers that are being thrown out tonight you need to check, and I'm begging you, I'm not asking you, I'm begging you, go check those figures. When I left in 2012, my collection rate was 95.32% out of an over $6 million budget levy. levy. Um, now what's being collected is current year. It is a lot of the assessments that are not past due that you were given 10 years to pay those, um, they need to go after the people who have not paid them. They need, and Linda's doing a great job. She really is. When I left in 2012, they were just being, uh, the, the year payment was just behind. So I went to the council and I asked for their direction. I never got an answer from them. I actually, we actually wrote off, they, were get, they gave me direction to write off what the town owed itself. And what I'm telling you and what these guys are telling you, you need to check your facts. Not just from me, but from everybody. There, if you'll go on the town website, if you'll go talk to the town manager, if you'll go talk to our finance officer, they can tell you. Thank you. move on to our third question now, starting with Ms. Cashwell. What do you see Oak Island looking like in 20 years? Beautiful. With planned growth and planning and conservative, look at everything. I genuinely believe, because we are such stout-hearted people, that we're gonna keep this as a, as a neighborhood community. You know, it's amazing how many people know everybody. And I've, I work the senior center a half a day once a month as a volunteer at the cash register. I ask every time somebody comes in, what brought you here? This is the island to nowhere. It's on a road to nowhere. How did you end up finding it? 
and you'd love to hear the stories. I could tell you a jillion of them, and all of them are different. But the bottom line, the one thing that the string that goes through it all is because they're friendly, the beach is wide, there's no, it's not a crowd, the little homes are wonderful, even though they rent, they still go to the smaller places simply because they feel at home, they're comfortable. It's like having a cozy blanket around you. So we genuinely need to protect and save what we have here. I grew up in a panhandle in a ranch where a tree was an event and an ocean was something I never dreamed I'd ever see. Water, my goodness, it was so scarce, it wasn't even funny. So once you get your feet wet and once you've had a green tree over your head, things change. And believe me, we need to protect those two items especially. The trees that are here, and it's an anomaly to me that we call this Oak Island Tree City, and yet we keep cutting them down unmercifully. That needs to stop. We need to stop and look at it. And of course, the beach is, the, the beach is of course, a given thing. So I, I look forward 25 years from now, and I hope I'm around, that everything is just expanded, but still the same context. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. What do you see Oak Island looking like in 20 years? I hope it looks like it does now. Uh, now, 20 years ago, you ask people that, they probably said the same thing and on back. Uh, but we're gonna grow because people, people have discovered us. Uh, you know, there was houses were sparse back in the 60s, early 70s here, but people's coming, people, more people have second homes, more people are retiring and moving to the beach. So we're gonna grow. But then, you know, I go down periodically and ride down to Ocean Isle Beach, Sunset Beach, and they've got a couple big motels out there sitting right on the beach. And I, I'd like to say that's why I didn't move there when I come down here, but I moved, I, Bought a house on Oak Island because it's the cheapest place to live and live on the beach. Boy, it, did, it ain't worked out real good for me uh, 15 years later. But I come back and I, I, I'm thankful that we don't have to have, and we're, well, let me rephrase that, we're not going to have any high rises here. I would like to see more houses built, uh, filling in the uh, empty lots. Uh, I have a couple people a week from my hometown back up in the western part of the state that call and say, what's for sale, and I say, oh, about three quarters of this island at any given time's for sale. And a lot of people come down and from my neck of the woods and other places and, and, and buy houses either for second homes or they move down here and retire. I wanna keep seeing that. I want to see that, and, but I wanna see it like it is now, but I wanna see a lot more of it. Mr. Pittman, what do you see Oak Island looking like in 20 years? Well, I come from the other, other direction on that one. I can tell you what I don't want it to look like. I don't want to come over the bridge and not be able to see the ocean. I don't want to see a bunch of commercialism. I don't want to see hotels. I don't want to see anything taken away from what we've got right now. I want it to stay single family residential. I want to be able to come and see the ocean when I cross the bridge. I had a guy tell me today that when they bought a house here on the, on the East Coast, that when he came over the bridge and saw the ocean, that his wife could hear the stress come out of him when he, when he saw the water. That's what we need to hang on to. That is what's important to me. I think that we've got something here that you can't find hardly anywhere else on the East Coast. When people come here, they don't buy, uh, they don't buy a home. Well, they, buy, they don't buy just a house. They buy a lifestyle. And everybody in this room probably knows exactly what I'm talking about because it's probably what brought you here as opposed to somewhere else. So I am absolutely 100% completely determined to keep this single family residential so that 20 years from now when you come on the island, you see, still see kids riding their bikes back and forth to Dairy Queen, uh, people being able to walk all over the island at, at 10 o'clock at night and not have to worry about anything, anything crazy happening. So I'm very, very much in favor of keeping this island. Just, you're gonna have to have progress. You're gonna have progress. You're gonna, you're gonna have to plan for it. You can't, you can't keep that away. But with zoning, I would like to see the commercial areas as close to 211 as, as they can be so that when you're here on the island, you look around, you still see the waterway, trees, houses, and the ocean, and nothing above 41 feet anywhere. Mr. 
Brian Cox. What do you see Oak Island looking like in 20 years? I see it being the same small town charm that I moved here for. I see it with the family oriented beach. I see 211 being more of a commercial district. It was probably, I guess, two years ago, Councilor Medlin and myself was the first ones to meet with the developers of the Charles. They told us about a wonderful project they wanted to put out there, and we thought, oh, that was going to be great. The tax base that was going to come into the town of Oak Island where we'd be able to afford to do things. The sewer system would fall under the county, the water would fall under the county, and all we would have to do is maintain like we do in here. We've got to make sure that the people in this town always come first. I remember when I started coming down here 30 years ago, my wife brought me here to the town of Long Beach, Yopine, and I'm like, God, I love this place. And I started meeting the locals, and they, 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 would, they made you feel like part of the family. And they, they, they say, you know, if the locals don't support it, it doesn't make it. And that's something that we've we, we got to take pride in, is this is our town. We started a UDO, a Unified Development Ordinance, and we put a committee together to send surveys out, to do studies, to see what the people in the town of Oak Island wanted their future to be. Not what council wanted their future to be, but what you want your future to be. We've set up meetings where everybody can come to these meetings and express their opinion, listen to ideas, and let us know when it finally comes back to council, well, this is what you want. You need to listen to us. This is how we want our town to be. And that's what I want to see in the future of our town, what the citizens of, the, of Oak Island want, and I'm ready to support that. Mrs. Bell, what do you see Oak Island looking like in 20 years? I'll be 20 years older. This is one of the reasons that I chose to run for council is because I care what happens to our island. I've been a resident here for a very long time. I like the small town feel. I do like feeling safe. I actually live by myself. I can walk outside anytime I want to and I feel safe there. I'm thrilled to see so many of you here tonight because it really does mean a lot about what you want. The comprehensive plan, they've mentioned it several times. There's a meeting November the 5th and November the 12th. This island needs to be what you want it to be. Small town, no high rises, open space, parks. Um, we, need, we need to fill up some of those commercial buildings with the mom and pop stuff, not the, not the big boys. And so I see it exactly the way it is now, just 20 years later. What do you see Oak Island looking like in 20 years? Well, I'll give you a little snapshot of what it used to look like when I was a kid. You used to have to walk through the woods to get to the beach. The trees were there. And unfortunately, a lot of them, or most of them, are gone now. And that's one of the things we have to stop. We have to, have to get our trees back if that's possible. And no doggone palm trees. You want a palm tree, go to Florida. <laughs> anyway, uh, I would love to see it the way it is now. And as has been said, though, progress has to happen, but it can be managed. We can, the things that make it great are the things like when you go to Russell's and you're having breakfast and you hear the people next to you talking about paradise and you realize they're talking about your hometown. It makes you feel good. And we need to appreciate that and we need to protect that, not just for us, for the people who visit here and for our grandkids and, and in the future. And it needs to stay as much as possible the way it is, but it has to prosper also. So we all have to work together to make sure that happens. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move on to our fourth question, starting with Mr. Kaiser. What experience can you bring to the town as councilman? Four years of being on the town council. That's what I've got. You know, uh, I got educated a lot. I, I come in thinking I was going to do a lot of things. Uh, hadn't done all of them, done done a good portion of them. But uh, when, I, when, I got on, well, when I moved down here and after I got on council, I didn't know what street ends were. I thought, what is that? Uh, I got educated on it and I learned. Uh, 
I said, when I got elected, I'm going to cut some off this sewer bill. And boy, did that not happen. It, it come to a point where I was glad that we didn't go up no more than 11 and three quarter percent in three years in a row. Uh, a lot of people have big dreams. Uh, but as y'all know, I've uh, been a firefighter and a paramedic and a police officer all my working career. Uh, I've always been the one that's running inside that burning building, waving at them people when they're coming out. And uh, that's what I'm doing here. This was a calling for me. People, we had a problem here, and I come in to fix it. And that's what I do. I solve problems. I'm proud of that. I can plan, and and I kind of enjoy it. Uh, I've never, uh, I've put out a lot of fires and stuff. I've never started one, but I've always been there to help people, and, and that's what I enjoy doing. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm bringing here. Uh, look at what I've done in the past four years. If you like that and want four more years of it, then consider putting me back in. If, if that's not what you want, then vote for one of these other fine people. They're good people. I know all these people. Uh, but that was the question, and that's what I can bring. Mr. Pittman, what experience can you bring to the town as a council member? Well, I bring 34 years of living right here on the, on the island. Um, I joined the fire department in 1983 and started volunteering, getting out of bed at 2 o'clock in the morning to go put out somebody's fire that I didn't even know. Um, getting up from a table with my kids after working all day and going and responding to an emergency somewhere. Um, I'm, I've... Uh, I've been through many, many hurricanes, well, practically every hurricane since Hurricane Diane. I did not make Floyd. Floyd, I was, I was actually teaching the fire brigade up in Vermont and um, watched the news. And if you're out of town and you're looking at, at, at the news, watching what's going on here, don't believe everything you see because I thought it was going to be total devastation when I got back. And it was pretty sandy over on Beach Road, but other than that, we were, it was, Oak Island was still here. Um, I think that the volunteers are a very, very um, big benefit to the island. And one of the things that I do not understand, and I've kind of skirted around this, but one of the things I do not understand is why the volunteers are not utilized as much as they were back when everything was volunteer on the rescue squad, on the fire department. My operating budget when I was, when I was fire chief was, and I'm pulling this from memory, I think it was like 119000 dollars for the new fire station and and uh, 30 volunteers close working relationship with Yopon Beach um, and now it's over two and a half million for the for the three stations is what I understand so I don't, I don't understand why the town doesn't see the benefit in the volunteers like it used to because there's resources there that are not being used and then when it comes to volunteers if you build it they will come so there are things that are available to us that we're, that we're not using. And I think that um, we need to go after resources that are there that, that are not being utilized. Thank you. Mr. Weinkoff, what experience can you bring to the town as councilman? Well, I'll tell everybody a little bit about my background. I am a facility maintenance administrator. I take care of maintenance at an 88-acre campus for the skilled living nursing center. I take care of assisted living. I take care of rehab, wellness, I take care of security, I take care of the grounds, and I take care of construction projects. That's a large task. I've been on every construction project for the last uh, four years, a $26 million project, and I'm on time with that project, and I'm on, on time with the budget, too. I know we're close to being over. Uh, I had a $5.6 million project. Project wound up on time in budget. I take care of budgets. I take care of construction projects. We have a huge sewer system in this town, and I've had staff call me to ask me ideas about this sewer system. Calling a council person to ask ideas, that's a, good, that's a good thing. And I would give them my recommendations because we have to work together to make sure this system works right. When the motors were overheating, we put oil coolers on them. I got a call about that. Told them it was a good idea we need to do that. When I walked in the door, I think it was about a month or two months after I came, came into office, we took a tour of the vac stations, and it was hot, very hot in these vac stations. They had electrical panels melting down, so we had some conversations, and I told them what they needed to do was build a heat shield wall to make sure the electrical panels were protected from the heat from the motors. We also found out none of the vac stations had air conditions in them. 
They were once designed for air conditions, but something happened and they didn't get put in there. We're now putting air conditioning in all the vac stations. I think it's very important for a council person to know budgets, how to take care of job sites, be able to relate with department heads to be able to talk about information so they understand and we all understand. And if a council person's got to answer to the town, the, the taxpayers, what's going on, they need to know a little bit what's going on in this town and what kind of job our employees are doing. I had this experience to be able to do this. Thank you, Mr. Warrenkoff. Ms. Bell, what experience do you bring to this town as a councilman? I have 25 years in local government. 20 of that was with the town of Oak Island. I've dealt with many different boards, many different management, many different mayors. I've been involved in, when I started, first started with the town of Oak Island, it was in building inspections, zoning, planning, um, land use plan updates. Um, I was the clerk for the, for the Board of Adjustment and for Planning Board. I've been involved in utility billing. I've been involved in um, finance as far as budgeting reporting. I finished as tax collector um, and I also spent two years as the deputy tax collector for Mecklenburg County back in 2002-2004 and worked in the real estate division of um, Mecklenburg. I then left here in 2012 and took a job with the city of Monroe to secure my retirement. They made me an offer I could not refuse, so I did a drive every Monday morning and every Friday afternoon, um, and I was actually their customer service, tax collector customer service supervisor. I have a lot of experience in being a public servant. Um, and I would like to ask for your vote. Mr. Blaylock, what experience can you bring to the town as councilman? Well, the experience that I bring is uh, mostly is uh, working with people. I spent the last 15 years, I retired a couple years ago, but I spent my last 15 working years anyway uh, as a police officer here on the island. And my specialty was community relations, community resource officer. So I saw our citizens one-on-one -on -one many, many times, in the good times and the bad. And that's the one thing that I think that I bring to as a different perspective, not looking at it from a government standpoint, looking at it from a citizen standpoint. What's important to the citizens? And I am willing to listen and I want to listen and I want to help because that's what a police officer does. Thank you. Ms. Cashwell, what experience can you bring to the town as councilman? Well, before I retired to Paradise, I was 38 years in the computer business. I worked for Frontier Airlines, Piedmont, US Air, TWA, and went to Europe for Amadeus with IBM. I um, I'm now currently the chairman of the Capital Improvement Committee. I'm on the planning board, and I was the chairman of the um, Board of Adjustments when we were dealing with the 15-bedroom house. Before that, I was actually a councilman in the 90s and a mayor in 204 and 205 of Oak Island. One of the greatest things that I've had has been serving this community. I would like to make one statement though tonight and straighten out an issue that some people keep misstating. I never signed the sewer agreement. I, I signed the treatment agreement with the county. When I became mayor, I realized that one of the reasons that I was running was that we were headed for a real problem because the council that was at issue at that time was considering doing the treatment themselves. Now, if you talk about expense, the sewer system that we have today is minor compared to what would have happened had we gone with the treatment. I met up with uh, Bill Sue, chairman of the, county, of the county commissioners, talked to him about it, and they agreed, the commissioners did at that time, to build a treatment plant based on Oak Island coming in as their first customer. So I consider that one of the greatest things that I've done for this community. 
Along with one other person, though, I was also founder of the Senior Citizens Center here. We started out with a $300,000 debt. Today, they're debt-free, and they have $50,000 in a trust for, to care for it. I would uh, also like to remind you that the council is the town, is the controlling factor of this town. Keep that in mind. This is not about a popularity contest. It's about experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, the, since we have more council candidates than we have mayoral candidates, we'll stick with the four primary questions that we had uh, planned on for this. So we'll move on to uh, closing statements at this point. So uh, everybody gets two minutes for their closing statements. And uh, we'll start with Mr. Pittman. OK, I was not quite ready for that. But <laughs> again, I have been here for 34 years. Um, I was with the fire department for years and years and years. I'm still working at the Brunswick nuclear plant. I uh, was an operator out there for 16 years. Now I'm a, an implementation manager out there is my job title now. I'm working with special, some of the special projects out there. Um, one of the things that I bring is the, tec the technical aspect of running a nuclear power plant is, is phenomenal. It's amazing that something that big is built by men and it works as well as it does because we can, you know, you know men can mess things up. Anything that's man-made is, is going to give you problems. Um, the sewer system, uh, I understand is going to have to have some upgrades done to it here before long. This plant was not designed for a saltwater environment, so we had to go and do some refits, and we had to do a lot of modifications to the plant to change out things that were not that were not designed for the saltwater um, environment that it was being run in. And I think that the technical expertise that people are going to have to have to look at the sewer system to to make the modifications there, there's going to be a benefit there. Um, I have been in law enforcement. I got my law enforcement certification. In 2001, I'm still sworn, I'm still a certified officer here in the county. Um, and I think it is amazing what our police officers do here on this island. I think the four guys, as big as this island is, for them to cover it as well as they do, I think that they, they do an awesome job. I think the employees at Town Hall need to be appreciated. I, somebody, and this is a comment that I heard, and if this is true, then shame on whoever made it, that you can go to Walmart and get another town employee if you need one. Our employees here, should not be looking for somewhere else to go. They should be appreciated for what they do because they do an awesome job. And it's not the town employees that make the decisions, it's the councils that makes the decisions. So it's, it's our responsibility to answer for the decisions and not the town employees. Mr. Weinkoff, you have two minutes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to hear us tonight. I had the experience to be able to see, oversee sewer projects. I had the experience to make sure this town runs the way it does. Four years ago, I asked to come in here and work for y'all. I have tried to do that to my best ability. When it came to the large houses, I stood up and fought against that. I actually noticed and worked with the uh, sewer director to make sure we have a plan that shows how many houses we can build on each lot and how many bedrooms can go on each lot. I have the experience to lead this town into the future, and that's what I wanna do with your help. I cannot do this by myself. This is not an I job. Us as council have worked very hard to pay off this debt that was created. When we took office, the sewer project was dearly underfunded. We had a huge general fund debt, and we have now got the sewer project properly funded with the money we've saved in the last year and a half, six and a half million dollars of your tax dollars. We'll now pay the general fund off in five years. That's the two fire stations, the town hall, the police station, and even the pier will be paid off in five years and we'll be general fund debt free. We've done all this without raising a tax. This year we actually de decreased the tax two cents because we didn't go to revenue neutral. This council has stood up and listened to the people in this town where other councils have not. And I will not sit here and say I did all this by myself because it takes a team to get a job done. And this council has worked together as a team. We've disagreed on subjects. We agreed on, su on, on things. But the main point was, when it came to the taxpayers, we all came together. We all decided that the taxpayers are number one. And I want to say this. We are the council who put in place where these employees now get raises 
and that they were evaluated and their salaries to adjusted to meet every other town. Ms. Bell, you have two minutes. I do want to thank everybody for coming. It's obvious from listening to me tonight that I'm obviously not a public speaker. I'm also not a politician. What I really am is passionate about our town. I retired in December of 2014. For about three months, I did absolutely nothing. Some days I didn't even get in my pajamas. Now, somehow, I have filled my days and I'm campaigning, but I'm campaigning to talk to you. I wanna know what you think. I have the experience, I have 25 years in local government, dealing with every facet of, of local government, from building inspections, to tax collections, to finance. If you have any questions for me, please ask. I'm just asking you to do your homework. Um, we have some good people running. Any of these guys would do a great job. I'm asking for your vote on November 3rd. Well, I, I've listened to all the comments and all the, all the problems that face us, but I, my, my focus would be on you, the people, because without you and without your help, we can't accomplish anything. We get all wrapped up in our technology. I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer like my, like my friend Mr. Vickers is, and I can't understand him half the time. But it, <laughs> at any rate, uh, I am willing to learn and work hard and listen to you because that's, that's the process. I don't claim to know all the answers. I don't even know all the questions. But I'm excited to try to help the town, and I will be there for you if you need me, and if you vote for me, I will do the job. Thank you. Ms. Caswell. Well, this has been fun. If there's one thing I like to do, it's talk. I prefer talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, and if you don't believe it, come by my headquarters, and we'll visit, and we'll talk about town issues. I think we've heard a lot of things. I will bring up one issue that has never been talked about. About six years ago, Yopon Beach and the Yopon Beach area actually was brought into the uh, old Long Beach vacuum system rates. They were promised that that would be looked into and tried to be equalized or at least made some kind of an adjustment. That never happened. Like I said, I have a Rolex mind. Why did it not happen? I will promise you tonight, elect me, and that's one of the first things that I want to look into. I'd also like to appoint a sewer committee of three citizens and two councilmen to have an oversight so that there is some understanding. We need transparency on that. I personally know too much about it, but others need to know and understand. I promise you also that if elected, I'll have a meeting once a week whether it's just me or you all come by. But I think we need to talk, and I think you need to understand what really makes this town work. I think you ought to have a first-hand knowledge of it. And I understand that getting up in council is intimidating. And so you go away with a lot of questions and you never hear the answers. And I understand that and I appreciate it. And the only way you can do it is to meet with us individually, talk to us, Give us a phone call. I personally don't like to do phone calls. I like to talk, looking you in the face. But I think that there are ways that we can continue on. We have a great community. If you elect me, I promise you the things that I've just spoke about will happen. Thank you. Mr. Kaiser. Earlier this year, somebody made a statement on Facebook uh, that we really want four more years of this. And, that statement haunted me, and this past weekend I called a good friend of mine from home. He, he's never been in elected office, and I said, uh, what do you look for when you elect a city council member up there in Hickory? And he said, I said, tell me about five or six things. And he said, okay. And I wrote him down on this piece of paper this weekend, and he said, don't raise our taxes. Manage and reduce debt. Build up reserves of un unencumbered dollars. Provide top-notch services, but 
in-house, but contract out when you can and save money. Uh, and take care of what people love your area for. And I thought, well, gosh, we've done all that in, in the last four years. Our tax rate's been held at 27 and a half cents on the $100 valuation. This year, we, uh, because of revaluation, we were two cents under revenue neutral. Uh, we've paid several million dollars off on debt. We have a plan, and this whole council worked on this with a good town manager. We're going to be debt-free other than that sewer system in five years. That's, in, that's including the pier. Uh, the fund balance was less than 25% when we took office. It's 56.25% now. Uh, we outsourced some stuff. Uh, we uh, eliminated some duplication of services, and we saved good money over that. And we placed one mile of sand on West Beach that did not cost one penny of ad valorem tax dollars. So uh, I asked myself as a taxpayer, do, do I want four more years of that? Yeah, gosh, I want 24 more years of that kind of stuff right there. Y'all remember four years ago, I stood at this same podium at this debate and told you there were two type of leaders, the fairy tales and the true grit. You look at the financial stewardship that's on this paper here, you'll see what kind of leaders you got on this town council. Y'all have a safe drive back to the house tonight. Thanks for coming. That concludes the 2015 Oak Island Candidate Forum. Thank you to our candidates. Thank you for everybody for showing up. Have a good night. <laughs>